crunch time for both Boeing and NASA. They finally sent astronauts to the ISS, but how to bring them home safely? Call SpaceX for help? No, Boeing will die of shame. So, Boeing and NASA have come up with a temporary solution, delay the return date. However, with Starliner's current status, especially its new fifth helium leak, will that solution work? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. It's the hardest thing I've ever experienced on landing. This is the feeling of NASA astronaut Butch Wilmore after his unforgettable landing in the winter of 2015. By then, he was returning to Earth in a Russian Soyuz spacecraft after spending 167 days aboard the International Space Station, ISS. The landing location was in the solid ground of Djeskazgan, Kazakhstan. The Soyuz spacecraft descended by parachute, and its braking at the bottom served to cushion the impact in the instant before it hit the ground. However, with the ice-covered soil in the cold Kazakh November, those did not work. I didn't get the breath knocked out of me, but I was still shocked. For his upcoming re-entry mission on Boeing's Starliner, Wilmore expects a gentler go of things. The Starliner will bring Wilmore and Williams to a soft touchdown under parachutes and atop airbags in the western United States. Potential landing locations include two targets in the White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico, Wilcox, Arizona, and the Dugway Proving Ground, Utah. Edwards Air Force Base in California is also available as a contingency landing site. It is also the first time an American spacecraft descending by parachute will touch down on land instead of in the ocean, eliminating the need for recovery vessels to scramble to the splashdown site. To cushion the impact, the Starliner is equipped with inflatable airbags that Wilmore and Williams call their marshmallows. To make Wilmore's dream a reality, the Starliner's two troubled components, the parachute and the thrusters, must first be reliable. The issues with the parachute system contributed to the indefinite delay of the spacecraft's crude flight test in 2023. For thruster, oh my god, I get sick of talking about it. This is the main culprit making the astronaut's journey to ISS aboard Starliner like a nightmare. If NASA and Boeing cannot handle this mess they have made, they will probably call SpaceX for help. It's embarrassing to do that, so they decided to push back the return date of the Boeing Starliner to no earlier than Tuesday, June 18th, meaning their stay at the ISS will last two weeks. The purpose is to give the crew time to complete a spacewalk and allow engineers to monitor three small helium leaks that were detected in the capsule following the initial launch. The initial plan was for the flight crew to spend a brief eight days on the space station. Much of their time will be spent testing the Starliner and ensuring it will be suitable to carry future crews for longer stays. The tests will be run on some components including Starliner's solar arrays, communications, onboard computers, power systems, and more. Furthermore, they will also check the simple matter of the ship's air tightness when it arrives in port. Simply approaching and docking with the station will demonstrate that the spacecraft's navigation and positioning systems work. That's important not just to prevent air leaks, but to establish that the spacecraft can serve as a shelter-in-place haven in the event of an emergency, like a sudden depressurization of the station, a fire, or a toxic ammonia leak from the coolant system used in the ISS's American modules. It's safe to say that Boeing Starliner's CFT mission this time is considerably different from SpaceX Dragon's Demo-2 mission, even though both are the first crewed test flights and the final major step for the spacecraft to get NASA certificated. Indeed, instead of just eight days or two weeks as Starliner, the Crew Dragon being used for this flight test was required to stay in orbit for up to 63 days. During those over three months, the crew and SpaceX mission control verified the spacecraft was performing as intended by testing the environmental control system, the displays and control system, and the maneuvering thrusters, among other things. After successfully docking, Behnken and Hurley were welcomed aboard the station and became members of the Expedition 63 crew. They performed tests on Crew Dragon in addition to conducting research and other tasks with the space station crew. Basically, these are just the standard tests to verify the vehicle is enabled to be a human-rated certification, which is applied on both Starliner and Dragon. However, the significant time gap shows that NASA was more serious and careful with SpaceX's vehicle, because at that time, they determined that the Dragon, not CST-100, would be the main vehicle to bring astronauts to the ISS.
To date, this remains one of the wisest decisions this national agency has made. For that reason, we can say that the Boeing 2024 test is simply a nominal test. The drive for NASA's decision came in the context that while Dragon set its first feet in space in 2020, as for Boeing, well, the clock was still ticking. An only partly successful uncrewed test flight in 2019 saw the ship get to space but failed to dock with the ISS. The second chance for Boeing Starliner called Orbital Flight Test 2, an uncrewed demonstration mission, also had a rocky journey similar to its third test flight, Crewed Flight Test. It wasn't until May 2022 that the company launched a successful uncrewed test mission, slipping nearly two years compared to the initial schedule. The final challenge, named Boeing Crewed Flight Test, came as Boeing faced serial woes on its commercial aircraft side after two crashes of its 737 line in 2018 and 2019 respectively claimed 346 lives and yet a door blew off a 737 MAX jet during a flight in January 2024. A series of serious accidents forced Boeing to sit on the hot seat. As predicted, the 737 failed multiple Federal Aviation Administration audits in the wake of the incident. Much worse, two whistleblowers who had come out against the company regarding production and safety issues suddenly died one on May 2nd of a severe infection, and the other in March of an apparently self-inflicted gunshot wound. Although Boeing did not assume any responsibility for the affair, the company has borne the brunt of public outrage. Perhaps to save its face, both NASA and Boeing's space divisions have tried to put the public off the scent with the Starliner launch. Finally, they took the vehicle off the ground successfully. We have humans flying on this vehicle, Mark Nappy, vice president and manager of the Boeing commercial crew program said, we always take that so seriously. We signed up to do this and we're going to do it and be successful at it. Yet, how do they bring the astronauts home safely? It's a truly difficult math for both Boeing and NASA. After all, Williams and Wilmore were the ones who expected the success of the mission more than anyone. It not only helps ensure their lives, but also, we want to go and get back as quickly as possible so they can turn our spacecraft around, and also take all those lessons learned and incorporate them into the next Starliner," says Williams. Assuming the mission succeeds, it's highly likely that a few of those next Starliners are to serve NASA's missions. 2030 onwards, NASA is hoping the spacecraft will continue in service to provide what NASA calls dissimilar redundancy, literally avoiding SpaceX's monopoly. The bruised Boeing brand should be recovered, and the successful Starliner project is expected to be a suitable treatment. If Boeing goes out of its space business, a number of nationally important projects will suffer in some way. The giant company was the prime contractor on the space station itself and the prime contractor for the design, development test, and production of SLS and so forth. SLS plays a vital role in NASA's Artemis mission. If the government decertifies Starliner, that is no small thing. Those projects probably have a big funding cut. Emily Nelson, NASA's chief flight director, stressed that the ISS is the longest continuously operational spacecraft in human history. So we're excited to bring the two together. However, we always pray that NASA will not risk human lives on this vehicle again. CST-100 should only be the cargo version and serve commercial resupply service programs. Musk's Crew Dragon spacecraft continues to monopole in ferrying astronauts to ISS, at least until when the crewed version of Sierra Space's Dream Chaser comes online. But this is in the long distant future. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.